Because now is a good time as any to record another vlog. Not a much, not as much happened over the past few days, of course. Um, but there's one thing that got me thinking. I'll tell you about it later. Uh, for now, I just want to let you know that uh, she borrowed more money for me to feed her cats. It wasn't much. It was like about what? Fifteen dollars or something? Thirteen, fifteen bucks worth of money. It wasn't much, but I guess it feeds the, the uh, cats for the next couple of days. Um, it's kind of sad, really. She went to her dad's grave today at lunch and uh, went back and apparently she didn't have any money to feed the cats and the dogs. So she borrowed some money and bought some animal food, some pet food. Well, at least the nice thing about today is that it's a windy, rainy day. So uh, temperatures got kind of low and it's very comfortable today. It's a very nice day. I just woke up this afternoon. Um, Woke up to a message from her saying she got just got home and wanted to borrow some money. <clears throat> so yeah, I just sent it over. It's fine. Wasn't much. I got the money, and uh, I don't have much money. <laughs> I don't know where my uh, salary has went. <laughs> I thought I could survive with those kind of money for the next couple of years, but apparently it's not happening. And uh, I've been pretty lucky uh, over the past year with Peter supporting me and sending me to that contract thing to get some income. The problem is they're not fixed. My contract is due in three months. I don't know if they're going to proceed with it. I don't know if Peter is going to proceed with it. I was hoping that YouTube would supplement uh, the deficit by then, but Apparently, that's not happening either, because all of my videos have so far flopped. And I'm out of ideas as to how to generate a proper video that people would want to see. I guess people just don't want to see Star Wars and Marvel and stuff anymore. We kind of get tired with the uh, toxic online discourse. There's got to be something better, right? So it's either uh, talking about memes and trends and those sort of stuff, or uh, I think YouTube has become some sort of a contemporality uh, in terms of videos. See, for example, um, most critical Charlie's video has been uh, well it's clear from his channel that people are interested in his contemporary common uh, current event videos more than his artistic endeavor or uh, hobbies or personal attempt to create proper content uh, that was kind of interesting because he made music videos, he made all kinds of stuff, but the best performing videos in his channel have always been his commentary on current events. And not current as in political or in the news events, just things that happen with regular people. So that was kind of interesting. He's got into that kind of niche, and uh, it's working for him. 
I wish I could just, you know, record things where I could just um, put a camera on a stand like this and then talk about it. But I guess that's just not happening. I wish I could talk more about Indonesia. There's lots to talk about. For instance, I learned a lot from this past election. Mostly is that Indonesians are not as advanced as I thought they are, or we are. Uh, <clears throat> for example, I've always wondered why people who just couldn't connect, couldn't relate with materials such as Star Wars or uh, high concept sci-fi. No, we just couldn't, Indonesians just couldn't relate to the idea that they're electing Uh, someone with lots of issue in terms of uh, war crime in the election. And uh, yeah, it, it's not a matter to Indonesians. These sort of moral dilemma is not an issue. All they want to know is that they could eat tomorrow. Or eat tonight. I guess it's not wrong. Even one of my friend is having issues in terms of buying something to eat for tonight. I asked her if she wanna she want me to buy something. She said, "Well, I guess not." She said, "No, I guess not," because she went to her uh, dad's uh, burial site today and cemetery today, and uh, family had a big lunch. I guess so. There's that. I think that's, at least that part should probably fill her up for the rest of the day. So just, you know, you know, you bought food for your animals. You want me to buy something for yourself? No. And uh, uh, after this, I'm just going to say, okay, just let me know if you want me to buy something for you. But yeah, that's the dilemma of today's show. Now, idiot me has been looking into cameras lately for some reason. Ever since that stupid Hasselblad showed up, and I was like, damn, that's a beautiful camera. It's the C100 uh, film back that sticks to the uh, old Hasselblad that works with the old 60s Hasselblad cameras. Uh, the uh, 500CM, the, the one they brought to the moon. You could just stick the film back, the digital back, to the old camera, and it's working again. I mean, that's amazing. More than 50 years old. And uh, the technology still works with one another. I mean, you can't say that about Canon. The FD lens doesn't work with the... Uh, RF lens, you need a, an adapter. The EF lens doesn't work with the RF lens. You need an adapter. But the uh, Hasselblad, the new digital back Hasselblad, you can just stick it right to the old film back and it will work perfectly. That was amazing. That's the kind of stuff that camera manufacturers should make. Uh... You could just run any Hasselblad and it'll work perfectly. Well, at least in that medium format system. Why couldn't Sony, Canon, or Nikon do that? Just make a digital back and every time there's a new version of a digital back you want to produce, just sell the digital back. You can have the camera body, you can have the... Uh, the F lens, you can have everything else working as is. You just need to replace the digital back and you're good to go. That would be a nice camera, right? But no, they sell an entire camera body. They sell an entire set well, when all you just need is just a different kind of sensor for certain uh, needs you 
need to use for your digital production. For example, in between APS-C full frame and high ISO camera like this one. It's a high ISO camera. It shoots up to 400,000 ISO. It's a night vision camera. For instance, I'm recording this in almost a complete darkness. I mean, sure, there's sunlight up there. It's behind the clouds. But I'm inside of a room, and with all my lights turned off, you can just see me clearly, just fine. The video is visible. Just simply having a highly sensitive high ISO camera shooting at me. This is why I've been looking into the A7R, A7S II, A7S III, and ZVE-1. They all have the same sensor, the FX-1, uh, FX-3. They all have the same sensor. Uh, it's been almost a decade since this camera came out. It's still the same sensor, just different optimization. And they gave out nice, clean images and higher speed readout in the newer camera. Works perfectly. You don't need to replace the body, you just need to replace the sensor and the uh, digital processor. That means you just need to replace the film back. So just sell a camera with replaceable film back and uh, it should be great. Well, like Hasselblad did. It should be standard, you know, but apparently nobody else is doing that. <clears throat> So yeah, that way you can just sell lens, camera body, and replaceable film backs in uh, <clears throat> with all three combined. People can just buy camera bodies. Can, people can just buy any lens shape you want. You can just, you know, produce a, several camera bodies. For instance, the standard DSLR shape, the rangefinder shape, camera bodies, or the... Uh, TLR or the uh, <clears throat> medium format shaped camera bodies that will people can just switch around and that'll be nice, but apparently no. Just got to stuck with this same old camera, but all of the discussion is moot because I'm not in the uh, financial position to buy any other camera bodies. And besides, this one works well. Why am I looking at other Cameras. Because of that stupid Hasselblad thing, I ended up in a rabbit hole of watching all kinds of camera reviews down to the A7S, A7S2, A7S3, uh, ZVE1, FX3, FX30. ZVE1 is underrated, by the way. It's the perfect vlogging camera so far, except for the uh, NTSC and PAL default setting. See, the problem with the Sony cameras that I just couldn't uh, get into is that they, 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 they default their cameras into PAL and NTSC. For the PAL region, like in Indonesia, when you switch to the NTSC, you get the 60p and 24p recording options, which doesn't show up if you're in the PAL mode. But the problem is, if you switch a PAL camera like this one into NTSC, every time you turn it on, it'll say running in NTSC mode. And it's just going to show up every freaking time you turn the camera on. Nikons don't do this, Canons don't do this, Fuji don't do this, only Sony. So that's the kind of thing that's been keeping me off of Sony. Now, luckily, the A7S, this one, has a hack where you can just uh, circumvent that. The same with the A7S II, which I've been thinking of getting ever since I got this one. Why didn't I get the A7, you know, fork more, a little bit more and get the A7S II? I don't know. That's probably a good idea. It's got better autofocus, but it still couldn't flip the uh, display in the back forward like I could the uh, RP. So I would rather use these. I don't know. Why am I looking at the Sony? The EOS RP is doing all that I need to record with a 
much better color science. I should be looking into that. I think it will record just fine with the same lighting conditions such as this one. What it won't do is record in the complete darkness. So yeah, that's the issue of the day. There is another thing that I want to talk about, about Indonesians, but I guess that's just going to have to wait for another opportunity. So yeah, that's it for today. I'll see you next time, okay?